do that again. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. That's good. I want to make sure you're awake. I was told in the choir this evening every once in a while I should shout something. Keep Lee awake, you know. I don't know. That's what I was told. That's what I was told. So if all of a sudden, like, I get real loud for a quick second, that's just keep Lee awake, so. Uh, no, God is good. And he, uh, he definitely gives strength as we need it. And uh, the days that we don't need it, we don't need it, and He doesn't give it to us because we don't need it. But the days that we do, He is always faithful. And um, I found whether it's a it's a day at work, or it's a, the Lord's day, or whatever it may be, um, God is always faithful, and is right there to help us through whatever we're dealing with. And to give us the strength, to give us the encouragement, to do what we need to do. And it's always when we're following the Lord that that strength comes. You know that. It's when you're serving the Lord that you'll feel that strength come. And um, I'm th so thankful for that. Um, this evening's sermon is going to be completely different than this morning. A uh, different direction. It's going to be something, it, it, it uh, well, you'll see. <laughs> How about that? You'll see. But um, I just want to thank the Lord for what He does in my life, what He does in, the, in this church. Because... Um, you know, we are a small church, but we serve a big, big God. Amen. And we have seen time and time again that He is able to always help us in whatever we need to do and give us what we need, uh, whether it's a need for a new roof or it's a, we had a need for, you know, doing something else, uh, you know, whatever it may be. The Lord is always faithful and has always helped us. Uh, to provide for those needs. And so I want to thank him for that this evening. Um, we're going to be in uh, 1 Corinthians this evening. So uh, if you'll find that in your Bibles. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm going to read a very short section of Scripture this evening. Um, and it's not one you read very often, but um, it's a very profound section of Scripture. So it's 1 Corinthians 4. We're going to read verses 1 through 5. So once you have that, please stand. 1 Corinthians 4, 1 through 5. <clears throat> so then, men ought to regard us as servants of Christ and as those entrusted with the secret things of God. Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. I care very little if I'm judged by you or by any of you in court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself. My conscience is clear, but that, but that does not make me innocent. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait till the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of men's hearts. At that time, each will receive his praise from God. Bow your heads with me. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word this evening. We thank you for how you have entrusted your truth to us. Speak to us from it this evening. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Some years ago, a pastor's wife had a very serious case of hepatitis. Later, the specialist told her that the battle for her liver was so acute that he could actually hear the blood rushing to, rushing to save it. Hmm. Very interesting. It sounded very severe. He said it was so severe that it, as he had the stethoscope there, it sounded like Niagara Falls. That's pretty bad. Thank God, though, she recovered fully with no trace of that disease or any of its effects. But it took a while. It took seven months of complete bed rest to get over that. Seven months of complete bed rest. That was an interesting time for this pastor. Suddenly, he was known as Mr. Mom for their three children. Thankfully, though, their church brought dinner to their home almost every night, so they didn't starve to death. Hmm. Thank the Lord for a compassionate church. But tough as it was on the entire family, the, man's, the pastor's wife had this to say. She had, she said that um, so much. She had so much praise for God for in her recovery from this hepatitis, 
Why? For one thing, she said during her recovery, no one could really look to her or count on her for anything for seven months. You think, how is that a blessing, right? She said she was very blessed, though. Here's what she said about it. She said during those seven months of bed rest where she couldn't do anything, God gave her the gift of cleansing her schedule. Everything that was so important to her before that day, all of a sudden didn't come, that wasn't very important to her anymore. During that time, God weeded out a lot that she didn't, that really didn't matter in her schedule. God weeded out a lot of things that really didn't matter after all, and left only what mattered. Okay? Priorities you'll never regret would be the sermon title this evening. Priorities you'll never regret. I'm sure if you look at many of our calendars, mine included, they are jam-packed to the edges. Especially as we're starting to move in towards the Christmas season. You know, uh, well, Thanksgiving into Christmas. I don't want to skip over Thanksgiving. There's some things going on there as well that <clears throat> will keep us busy. But uh, our schedules are jam packed to the edges. I don't know about you, but I have a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, you know, we have in our own church, we have our own cantata, we have a community choir, we have the uh, Christmas in our hometown that some of us are preparing for, there's the Thanksgiving service here, there's just a lot of things going on. So our schedules, with all of our other normal stuff, get jam-packed to the edges. I don't know about you, but some of the days in my date book, those squares that you write in are way too small to write everything in some days. Mm -hmm. Don't have the room. Our life often is congested with places to go and things to do, often filling our lives with unneeded stress. I don't know if you're feeling it, but sometimes I feel it. I think we all could really use a priority check. We all can. What do you think? I think we could all use a little schedule cleaning at times so we can focus our time on the things that really, really, really matter. And to quote Bill Snyder, let the main thing be the main thing. I always like to quote that. We let the main thing be the main thing. Now, I'm no magician, no sleight of hand here, so I can't make your schedules all of a sudden become clear. I can't make your responsibilities disappear. I can't do it. But I can give you some simple advice. I can give you a simple grid that may make your life a little more doable. A little more manageable. Now, I'm not going to take credit for the idea. This is actually Martin Luther's idea. Well, way back. It was probably before calendars, you know. I mean, as far as personal calendars and everything like that. This goes way back to Martin Luther. This is his idea. He said he only had two days on his calendar. Two days. He had two days on his calendar. And one of those two days was Judgment Day. Think about that for a second. He had two days on his calendar, and only and one of those two days was Judgment Day. So, because of that, he tried to evaluate everything on the other day on his calendar in light of that, in light of Judgment Day. Think about how your priorities might change if we did that with everything. Is this important in the face of eternity? Is this important when it comes to my Judgment Day? You might be able to clean up your calendar pretty quick. <laughs> So think about that. Judgment Day is coming for all of us. We spoke about that this morning. So, if you have two dates on your calendar, if one of them is Judgment Day, what's the other day? Today. Today. So you only have today. That's it. Today and Judgment Day. So we need to prioritize or evaluate everything we do today based on what does it matter for Judgment Day. That will really help us get our priorities straight. It really will. God actually talks about this great values clarifier in our scripture this evening. 1 Corinthians 4, here at verse 2. Paul writes, It is required that those who have been given a trust, and I want to add, we all have, we've all been given a trust as Christians, must prove faithful. I care very little if I am judged by you or by any of you in court. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore judge nothing before the appointed time, Wait till the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of men's hearts. At that time, each will receive his praise from God. 
So to look at your schedule, to look at your priorities, and you say, if it's not going to matter there on Judgment Day, how, ma how much should it matter today on my calendar? Think about that for a second. Now, earlier Paul talked about things that were just wood, hay, and straw earlier in Scripture that we didn't read. What happens to wood, hay, and straw? It burns up. They burn on that day on Judgment Day. Jesus said they would burn on that day. So that's a priority check. Luther said he only had two days on his calendar. Judgment day, and as you all said, agreed, this day. Today. This day is the only day we can live in right now. I don't need to be weighed down by yesterday, because guess what? Yesterday can't be changed. There's not a thing you can do to change yesterday. I don't need to be fretting and worrying about the future. I'm not there yet and I can't control it anyhow or anyway from today. So we need to focus on today and what matters in the face of eternity today. That should be our priority. What I have, all I have, is today. That's all any of us has. Today. Talked about this morning. Today. We have today one 24-hour slice of life in which to honor our Lord in everything we do. Are we doing it? One, you have one 24-hour slice to honor God in everything you do. So this day will count on that day. That's why we do that. That's why we glorify the Lord in this day. So what we do today will count on Judgment Day. Maybe that's what Paul had in mind when he said this. Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Philippians 3.14. That's what I'm sure he was thinking of. That day, judgment day. Keep your eyes on the prize all day long on this day, each and every new day. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't fret. I mean tomorrow. Don't fret about yesterday. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus today. The main thing will be the main thing. God will take a life that you have lived for him with his priorities one day at a time and he will stitch that all together to make a life out of those days that will fulfill you and glorify him. Think about that for a second. Each day, he'll stitch those, those days together to give you a life that will fulfill you and glorify him. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will, I will rejoice and and be glad in it. We all know that, right? Yeah. I hope we all know that. It's a great way to live, you know, with only <coughs> two days on our calendar. Two days that you have to really worry about. Not worry, but be prioritized with. Judgment day and today. That's it. Too many times we fret and worry about what's going to come tomorrow. Too many times we're so concerned about what we did yesterday. If you get yesterday under the blood, you don't got to worry about yesterday ever. And if you commit tomorrow to the Lord, you can live today for Him. That's all we need to do. That's all that needs to be said. Our priorities get so mixed up. They get, we get so busy. And there's one little word we all need to sometimes learn. It has two letters in it if our schedule is getting too busy. N- Oh, no. There's nothing wrong with saying no occasionally. Never forget that. Especially when, again, you judge it against eternity. You go, wow, my schedule is so busy. Someone wants me to do this. What does this mean in, in the eyes of eternity? Nothing. N-O. <laughs> because God doesn't want you to live a life full of stress. He doesn't want you to live a life full of worry. He wants you to be focused on Him. And in that, He will bless your life. In that, He will make you fruitful for the kingdom. That's what we should be focused on. Because again, two days. Judgment Day and today. So again, today, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will be glad and rejoice in it. Judgment Day and today. If you... And we were done quick tonight, that's okay. Um, if you make God's priorities your priorities, 
you'll never go wrong. Amen. If you make God's priorities your priorities, you'll never go wrong. Amen. Because too many times we try to set the standard. We try to set the priorities. And we forget about letting God set the priorities. But if we sit down and pray about it, read His Word, seek His face, and then let God set our priorities as His priorities, we'll never go wrong. We'll never go wrong. And in the end, you'll look back on your life and you'll be satisfied. And God will be happy. He'll be pleased with what you've done and how you've lived your life. Because if you're living in the center of God's will, as the pastor always says, that's the safest and best place to be at all times. And how do you do that? Make God's priorities your priorities. So this week, Set God's priorities as your priorities, one day at a time. Make sure you set time aside for prayer. Make sure you set time aside for reading God's Word. Make sure you set time aside for being in God's house. And then, let God set the rest of your priorities. And let His, his, his priorities be your priorities, and you, you'll be so satisfied. And you'll be so fulfilled in your life. In your life, too, will glorify God in everything that you do. So again, tonight, what was the sermon title? What was it? Prior to priorities you'll never regret. If you let God's priorities be your priorities, you'll never go wrong, and you'll never regret it. Stand with me. Stand with me, please. Rick, would you close a prayer?